It's incredible how far we've come with video games so far, and to think that it all started with the very first consoles who launched the gaming industry into astronomical growth, but it wouldn't be until the arcade machines became popular that people started to discover new entries to play later at home. While some of them have become extremely popular like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter and Daytona USA, a lot of arcade games have received critical appraise but either were left forgotten or not appreciated enough to survive the market. Today I am going to talk about 10 arcade video games that you must play at least once in your life. I will not include games such as Mortal Kombat, Tekken, Street Fighter or Metal Slug as these have transcended the arcade format and are available to play in other platforms. Stay with me because I am going to talk about them. Roll the intro! Even though Red Dead Redemption redefined the western thing gaming, Sunset Riders gave it a shot in 1991. In this game you can play as any of these four cowboys – Steve, Bob, Billy or Cormano. The gameplay mechanics are easy – you travel through the level, get rid of enemies, get power-ups for your pistols and defeat the bosses. If you want to play on easy mode, you would choose either Bob or Cormano, since these two use shotguns with steady blasts of bullets that cover most of the screen. If you play with Billy or Steve, you get single bullets instead, but you can angle them with ease. The game is rather short as it only has 8 boss fights. Nonetheless, the reason why this game was a quarter hungry machine is because of its difficulty. You only need to get attacked once to lose a life, lose 3 lives and the game is over. I remember playing a lot of this game in the past and one day I was able to beat it with my boy Billy. In some regards, the game has not aged so gracefully due to the themes that would not fit nowadays standards for video games, but it doesn't take away the fact that it's really fun to play. And hard. The ideal scenario would be to play the arcade version, as it's the best version out there, but if you can't seem to find a way to run an emulator for arcade games, you can also play the SNES version of this game as the port is truly well replicated and has the same exact levels and quality. Do not go for the Sega version, as a lot of the content is missing in this version. Still, I know that North American Cowboys might not be everyone's cup of tea, so how about we go from the old western USA and fly all the way to Japan? Ok, it's interesting to see how many people has never heard of this game before. Snow Bros is a platformer game released in 1990 that has a total of 50 levels. Every 10th level there's a boss fight and when you get rid of the boss, the new areas will present new enemies, new mechanics for the enemies and you'll be forced to think outside of the box. Instead of jumping on top of the enemies, you turn them into snowballs, push it and destroy as many enemies as you can. You can get up to 3 power-ups represented in colored potions. The red potion will give you running speed, the blue one will help you create snowballs faster and the yellow one will give you more range to attack enemies. There's also the green potion that will turn you into a giant ghost that can fly throughout the map and destroy enemies as you please, but this one rarely appears. If you manage to destroy all the enemies in the area in just one snowball push, you'll be rewarded with money bills that will give you extra points. However, if you take too much time in a level, a ghost pumpkin will appear that cannot be killed. Instead, this ghost will send invisible ghosts that will kill you if you don't finish the level in time. It's really challenging, fun to play and the music is simply a 10 out of 10.
there was a sequel called Snow Bros 2 with new elves, which was not as fun as the first entry, and it was truly unnecessarily creepy. And it pales in comparison to the graphics and sound design of the first one. But platformers are not really the reason why people went to the arcades to begin with. These were only a fraction of the games played during that time. Instead, beat-em-ups were more popular at that time. Remember Final Fight and Streets of Rage? These two redefined the beat-em-up genre and raised the bar for future games. So it's not surprised to see that these two next games did not become as popular as the ones I mentioned before. Not because of their quality, but because of how they were overshadowed by more popular entries. These two games have a very dedicated fanbase that remembers them with love and passion even to this day. And these games are Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. The Punisher. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs is pretty simple. Dinosaurs exist, villains wants to use dinosaurs for evil, so you beat thugs and dinosaurs. But what about the Cadillacs? What does it have to do with the game? Well, let me tell you, my friend. You drive the Cadillac and you run over enemies and dinosaurs. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Best game ever. Also, the best character of the game is Mustafa Cairo. I don't care what you say, he's the best one. Hey, cool. On the other hand, we also got Punisher, based on the Marvel comic of the same name. You can play as either Frank Castle or Nick Fury. Now, I don't know how faithful this game is to the comic, but I only recognize one character other than the ones you play as, and that is the final boss, Kingpin. All I can say about this other game is that it's really fun, challenging, and the graphics look really nice. I think that the reason this game was forgotten by many is because of how it was overshadowed by another Marvel beat-em-up game, X-Men, which never received a port to any modern media. Seriously, the last port of this game was on Xbox 360, but never on Steam. But leaving X-Men aside, Punisher and Cadillacs and Dinosaurs are beat-em-ups that were unfortunately forgotten by many. But the next entry is an arcade game that was not forgotten, but rather begged to be ported to modern media for many decades now. Who on the right mind thought that a Simpsons game in a beat-em-up style would work? And can someone give that person an award? Because this game is absolutely phenomenal. One of the greatest beat-em-ups of all time, competing with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Battletoads and Golden Axe as the best beat-em-ups of all time, the Simpsons arcade game is another gem that was never ported to modern media. Also, if you mentioned that it was ported to PS3, well, sorry for breaking it up to you, mate. I said modern media. The PS3 is already 17 years old. The plot of this game is rather simple. Maggie catches a diamond in her mouth, and so Smithers decides to kidnap her, forcing the Simpsons family to go and rescue her. Does the game make sense? Absolutely not. March fights with a vacuum cleaner, and you know what? It doesn't matter, because the game is really fun and difficult. I know I say this a lot, but this is one of the few games I was never able to complete. I actually had to watch videos on YouTube to watch the final fight against Mr. Burns. Nonetheless, this game allows up to four players at the same time, and it boggles my mind that it hasn't been ported to modern media. Like, internet speeds and servers can run much better nowadays, and it's the perfect game to play online. And even so, if you don't want it to be played online, having some friends over to play this game is the perfect scenario as well. Who is the publisher that doesn't know how to handle this business? Oh. It's Konami. Never mind, it all makes sense now. 
Let me remind you that I'm aware this game is not obscure, and this list is not about obscure arcade games, but rather arcade games that you should play at least once in your life. But if you want an obscure arcade game, I can give you one too. Cyberbots, Full Metal Madness is a fighting game with giant mechas. The character roster is very small, but every character has a nice variety of robots to choose from. I mean, I think I already said everything you need to know. Fighting game with robots. What else do you need? Oh yeah, a killer jazz soundtrack in the background while you shoot lasers, how about that? Normally, I would not like anime-themed video games, but this one is an exception. You see, when you play this game, instead of just reaching the final boss and get the story ending, you see the story throughout the game as you progress with your character. The characters are exaggerated AF, the dialogues are actually well written and there's some twist here and there that will surprise you. Also, you may recognize the main character, Jin, who is a playable character in the first Marvel vs. Capcom game. Well, this is the game where he first appeared, so now you know. And speaking of Marvel vs. Capcom, there's another game related to that one that deserves to be mentioned. X-Men Children of the Atom is a 2D fighting game starring the characters of one of my favorite comic books of all time, X-Men. If you've played Marvel vs. Capcom, you already know what this game is about. Then why do I put this game on the list instead of Marvel vs. Capcom? Well, the reason is this. This is the first game of this franchise that started this trend. Yes, had it not been for this game, there wouldn't be Marvel vs. Capcom to begin with. Even though Darkstalkers was the first game from Capcom that added extensive and complicated combos to fighting games, it is in this game where the combos were perfected. This game came only a couple of months after Street Fighter 2 Turbo, just so you have an idea. Thanks to the release of this game, Street Fighter Alpha was born a year later using the same engine. X-Men vs Street Fighter came after that. Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter came afterwards and only then Marvel vs Capcom would be born. So yeah, this game is a pretty big deal. It's the one that started a never-ending trend and standard for fighting games. Now, call me nostalgic, but I prefer this 2D aesthetic for the fighting games to the 3D modern ones, but that's just still my take. Still, there is another arcade fighting game that experimented with 3D graphics at that time. Ergase is the definition of 3D fighting game. Is it the best one? Nah, in my opinion that's Bloody Raw, and yes, I think that Bloody Raw is much better than Tekken, come at me. But without a sign, Ergase has been forgotten despite having a memorable roster of characters such as God Hand, Li Shu Wen, Dasha Inoba, Sasuke, Prince Doza, Yoko Yoyo, Joe, Cloud Strife, wait, what? Tifa Lockhart? Sephiroth? Yeah. This game is only remembered for two things specifically. For some weird reason, a lot of Final Fantasy VII characters appear as guests, the ones I mentioned, and also Zack, Vincent and Yuffie. You can unlock them and play as them as well. And no, they are not skins for other characters. They have their own movesets and abilities resembling the ones from the Final Fantasy VII game. The other reason people remember this game is because of its adventure mode, which has nothing to do with the fighting game in itself. I am not kidding on this one, you actually have two completely different games on this, and it was an arcade. 
You basically go from a brawling fighting game to an unforgiving RPG adventure game with, in my opinion, the worst ending for such a tedious task. Yeah, this game was not really that good, but you should play at least once in your life as it is one of those weird experiments that somehow managed to make it into the market and was even ported to the PS1. But seriously though, the adventure part is truly unforgiving. I remember having anxiety attacks because of how difficult it was. But nothing gave me as much anxiety as the next arcade game. In the 90s, Jurassic Park was everywhere and everything. Merchandise, toys, you name it. And it was only a matter of time until we got video games as well. So what genre would fit a game about a park filled with dinosaurs? Well, what about a shooting rail game that starts like this? Imagine being a little wee lad like me, inserting a quarter and this is the first thing you have to face. No time for introduction, no time for tutorials, time to shoot boy, if you don't, your life will be in jeopardy. And you would think that after this section, the game would be kinder to you, but nope, gotta keep yourself alert at all times. This game is not for the faint of heart, that's for sure, but you know what it is? Fun. Yeah. This game was exciting, thrilling, graphics were impressive and it truly immersed you into the world of Jurassic Park. Scary? Yeah, but exciting nonetheless. And I truly miss this from video games from that time, the way they were not scared of jumping right at you at full force with the intention of testing your skills and giving you a good time. Also, let's be realistic as well. These games were meant to be difficult so you would spend a fortune in quarters. But still, it was rewarding, just like playing Time Crisis or House of the Dead. But there is one more arcade game that you should definitely play at least once in your lifetime. One of the hardest games that I've ever played. So much so that even as an adult, I have had a real hard time even surpassing the first levels. And that is... Terminator 2 – The Judgment Day is simple. You aim, you shoot. You try to avoid dying from the T-800s trying to kill you from the moment you start the game. I may be getting old or might be exaggerating to you, but this is easily one of the hardest games I've ever played in my life. Never had I had so much frustration and fun at the same time with a game such as this one. It is important to understand that this game does not follow the movie storyline perfectly as a lot of content was created for the game alone. A lot of these choices are questionable, not in a moral way mind you, but for bizarre reasons. But still, I was not able to see much of this game until I was able to watch YouTube videos as an adult. What I did see when I was a kid, however, was one guy beating this game when I was 9. I did not get to see the previous part before that, but by the time I arrived to the arcade, I could see this 20-something years old guy with a goatee fighting against T-1000 and man, it was a spectacle to see all these people around this guy, seeing things we were never able to see before. Boys and girls surrounding this guy while we saw T-1000's face being split in half knowing every little detail from the game, not hesitating a single moment. It was a streaming session even before Twitch ever existed and the moment we saw T-1000 falling into the molten steel, we all cheered and applauded the guy for his masterful performance. I am telling you, it was a sight to behold. 
this guy knew exactly what he was doing and delivered it perfectly. This is the kind of game you need to experience at least once in your lifetime, because the rush, adrenaline and passion you feel at the moment cannot be compared to anything else in the world. But you know, what else cannot be compared to anything else in the world? If you liked, commented and subscribed to my channel. There are a lot of games that also deserve more recognition as well, but I can't do all the research on my own as my full-time job forces me to only spend a fraction of my time on my YouTube channel instead of dedicating the time I want. So if you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment telling me if you've ever played any of these games before or if you have any other suggestions as well. It would help me a lot to see this channel grow and who knows, maybe even make it my full-time job. And just like that, all of these games that you should definitely experience at least once. Like I said earlier, I may be getting old and nostalgic, but arcades are a very important part of my childhood. Because of them, I was able to be interested in video games to begin with and embark on this journey that I'm currently on. But with that said, thank you for your time. This has been Juano and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.